I had a debate Saturday morning on um, CAC equals zero start a statin was my position and then I debated one of the CAC guys, the <laughs> imaging guys, and his was CAC equals zero don't start a statin. So we had a nice civilized debate. I mean that's sort of was my question but so you know you have a, a, a test you have you can test for calcium scoring and you know little bits of calcium in the arteries you know that go along with kind of advanced atherosclerotic plaque and so a lot of the interest uh, to date has been on if you know finding people who have calcium and say does that add information to you know like risk factors and stuff how can we find high-risk people to treat more intensively earlier and so I think people are pretty comfortable with that approach but of course having now free time they are looking at <laughs> the opposite end of the spectrum which is okay well how somebody how about if somebody doesn't have CAC does that tell us information um, and indeed it does because if you your CAC is zero it means you don't have much advanced complex atherosclerotic plaque it doesn't actually tell you if you have earlier stages of plaque um, and it doesn't really tell you if you have no plaque or you're just the day before you have your first <laughs> plaque rupture so it's just saying well you know it's just one more piece of information it, you know if you don't your CAC is zero even though your risk by the pooled calculator might be elevated you know if your CAC is zero you probably got some time you could keep working on lifestyle and don't have to take a statin My alternative is say, well, I know these people, I mean, I, obviously we wouldn't want to do CAC scoring on 20-year-olds because it's meaningless. We're not going to treat them anyway. But I think in the probably men in their 40s, 50s, if they have a zero calcium score, it doesn't, I, of course they do because they don't have the plaque. It doesn't mean they're not at risk, and it doesn't mean that giving them a statin won't sort of arrest the progression of their disease. So this is the, the atherosclerotic risk, you know, just goes up and at some point somebody has a heart attack or a stroke. And so what we can do is we can give them, um, wait till their risk is 15%, give them a statin and kind of, you know, slow down the trajectory. My argument was why don't we give them, it's still reasonable to treat people down as low as 5% treat them. We've prevented all those events. People didn't have to have. I mean, 25% of events are deaths. So I'm thinking, you know, if you've got a drug that is inexpensive, <laughs> it's generic, is really safe and well tolerated in the vast majority of people, I'm sorry, you know, conspiracy theorists <laughs> out in the media, they really, was really well tolerated in healthy people, especially younger people. They tolerate statins really well. I mean, why wouldn't you want to do it, you know, and kind of gave that that approach. So my conclusion slide was keep CAC zero, start a statin, avoid preventable events. You know, there are a whole bunch of people where CAC equals zero is meaningless. People with familial hypercholesterolemia, with super high cholesterols, they have such accelerated cholesterol plaque buildup, they don't even have calcification. To not treat them because their calc is zero, it doesn't make sense. Same thing with diabetics, they have an accelerated trajectory. So anybody who's sort of accelerated condition, then you CAC equals zero sort of doesn't really mean anything. It was very non-quantitative. You know, I, I actually, everything I said had multiple references. Many of the references were the same as had he used references he would have used in his argument, but his was just more philosophical. It's like, well, you know, why give people a pill? What if they don't want it? You know, it's like, I thought, well, you know, this is, this is not philosophy 101. This is, you know, I have a little bit more data. I also quoted a cost-effectiveness analysis, so people have looked at this and they compared, treat everybody, I think it was everybody over 40 or something, but the statin, which is not what I'm advocating, but nonetheless, that's a lot of statin, compared to using CAC scoring to select people, and it really was not cost-effective to use CAC. It was cheaper to treat everybody because of all those extra events you prevented, as long as statins were inexpensive which they are, and as long as statins didn't have any severe side we effects. We learned from HOPE, Hope 3, right, uh, earlier uh, in the conference, um, you know, even uh, we keep whittling down on the level of risk where people, you know, statins still reduce events, so um, it looks like statins work at, in everybody. You know.